Knicks, Philly, Clippers, wing market. Let's start with Paul George. Stein, Mark Stein came out with his newsletter over the weekend. Um, that feels and, and in his newsletter, he stated that the Knicks could be an option here for Paul George, given that he's at a contract impasse with the Clippers. Seems like he wants that four-year deal at 221. The Clippers seem to be balking at the extra year. Maybe they're, they're around the three-year. I believe it was like 150, between 150 and one, one, um, 160. The Kawhi deal. They the, want yeah, to the, Kawhi the Kawhi deal. deal. The Kawhi deal. Now, Steinlein saying the Knicks could be interested if he chooses to opt in, which is his date is June 29th. What did you think about when, when, you, when you heard that news as it relates to the Knicks? So I'll just add to it. I'm just looking and, and yeah. shout out to New York Basketball, great Twitter account, um, that he they, they just retweeted um, a Windhorse clip from this morning on mm. Get Up saying, Windhorse saying that the Let me, Paul George situation could come to a head in the next day or two, wow. according to him, in terms of an opt-in and trade because – you know, I don't know how much you've been getting into the the cap part of the George thing, but like, if he want, yes, he could walk in, he could become a free agent and walk into you know Philly's cap space or Orlando's cap space, but if he wants to come to the Knicks without getting boring everybody to sleep with the with the cap stuff, it would need to be an opt in and then get traded. So he like on his forty roughly nine million dollar number for next year. Look, I I love Paul George as a player. I think. He is, again, if we're bringing it back to Boston, what do you want to have if you want to try to beat Boston? You want to have a guy who is not going to present any weak spots on either end of the floor, meaning could defend a multitude of positions when he's on defense, and then on the other end can create his own shot, yes, which Paul George could obviously do, but he's also he can play easily a second fiddle. I mean, he's one of the best spot-up shooters in the league, and he's a willing spot uh, shooter as well. The guy has only increased his three point percentage in terms of uh, volume over the years. I I love the idea of like lining up Paul George and OG Ananobi. I like the idea of lining up Paul George and, and Julius Randle. I, I think there are benefits <laughs> to both. Unfortunately, yeah. the way the cap works, you're not getting all three of those guys. It's not just, there's no way it, it's there's no way that it's going to work. So if you're the Knicks and you're looking at a George situation, you're saying, all right, do we go with what we have here already, which we kind of know what that is. We saw it in January. Or do we upset the apple cart? And if you upset the apple cart to bring in George, obviously there's the age part, making a ton of money. Um, you're going to have to give him three years on top of next year. Um, the, 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 the easiest way to go would seem to be to include Randall in some type of deal. Again, that's just the way the math works under the cap. I'm not going to bore everybody with why. Is that a trade-off you want to make? Like, a lot of people would say no. Some people would say yes. I'm not doing it. You're not doing it. Not okay. Doing it. Look, I, for all the reasons you just said, I love Paul George. If you want to pick, the, like, the one of the most perfect profiles to go with this team right now, that's, it's him. That's it. I liked him when they were after him last year when those rumors started to percolate. And I like the type of player now. But it's just like you said. I, I put it out there on Sunday on Twitter, like – Am I trying to see them trade a 29-year-old Randall for PG right now? Is it is it that drastic of a change? Are they really ready to, to go that route? Then not even to trade the asset, but then you got to sign him. You got to pay yeah. him. A guy northwards of 35. I don't I don't I just don't like it, man. I just don't like it. Maybe it's the trauma, the the PTSD of, of being a Knicks fan and and you know of of yesteryear when when they gave those guys those type of deals and it never worked out. He had a great year last year. I just don't trust him, man. I don't trust him. Um, I, I, and when it's funny you say you don't trust him because you're talking about the health. Yeah. You could very easily be talking about the playoff performance That's where right. you want to talk about night and day. I mean, if you went and watched, I forget what game was it against Dallas this year, where he went out and scored like 25 points in the first half. He looks like he looked like the greatest player yeah. on the face of the earth. And then you turn on the TV a few days later, and it's like, did Paul George play in this game? Like, you know, one, two for ten or whatever the heck he he went in like one either game five or game six against the Mavs. I don't think either game was particularly good. Um, so, but but again, the thing there is that's him as the first option. I think we know enough to know. Yeah, like you don't want Paul George as your, right. as your first option, even though he he did an admirable job and quiet went out a few years ago and he he helped take them to the conference finals. But but as a second guy, 
specifically with Brunson as the head of the snake, for me, it really does come down to how do you think this guy is going to age? What kind of shape does he keep himself in? Is he going to be committed to, you know, an off-season training regimen? Like, you know, basically you're asking him to be LeBron. Not LeBron in terms of a player type, yeah. but like LeBron in terms of being able to keep himself Longevity. Healthy. Lo- exactly. Longevity. Thank you. That's that's the word I was looking for. If you have doubts about that, then you probably can't make the move because you are taking what right now is – it's not a wide-open runway because, again, the cap stuff is, is coming. It's It's here. But when you when you make your move for a guy that that's this age, it's like, all right, we're, we we think it, we're going to be able to do this in the next two to three years. Which look, they it's not that they can't, but but you're are you cutting yourself off at that point as opposed to if you stick with Randall? But then is it like, oh, we're, you know, we're trying to have our cake and eat it too, and then we end up with nothing. It, I I think it's a really interesting discussion. I'll just say that. Yeah. And I I could I could see both sides having a, a point. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. We got a $10 super chat from David Crockett. Davey Crockett okay. in the chat, man, says, if anyone day. is still mad about national media types still doing the LOL Knicks thing, we got CP, Macri, the Strickland, and others doing the holy work for us. Thanks for everything y'all are doing. All love and respect, man. Yeah, salute to David Crockett. Definitely appreciate the support. And if you guys are in the chat, man, on your lunchtime grind, go ahead and leave a hashtag grind in the chat, and we will shout you guys out. Let me let's let's play the wind horse clip. I do have it pulled up here. Sure. And then I, I want to look at this Paul George thing for, from another angle as well. This is Brian Windhorse, courtesy of Get Up this morning. And so in New York for uh, for pulling this up. Okay, here we go. Is Paul George the guy though? Is this the most important domino in free agency? Well, let's remember that Paul George has three options. One is to re-sign with the Clippers. Two is to enter free agency and go somewhere else like Philly or Orlando. Three, he can opt into his contract and get traded by this weekend. That is something that is going to come to a head in the next day or two if he wants to go with that option because obviously you'd have to negotiate a trade. And then the team wouldn't necessarily need salary cap space. So the Paul George sweepstakes is going to come to a head, at least that aspect of it, faster than those other players who are going to be free agents like Clay Thompson or Demar- Marta Rosen. So Paul George has a different menu of options, and we're going to see some action in that probably coming up, you know, very quickly after the draft. Well, whatever it is, we know that Paul George is a championship caliber player who hasn't shown. All right, so we'll, we'll pause that. So that was get up. Now, the do we fi- know that Paul George was a championship caliber player? <laughs> yeah, right. I, I like Paul George a lot. I'm a, I'm a bigger fan of the potential move than you, but I, that was interesting. To hear. Yeah, that was very interesting. Now, what about the reports that? Yeah, the Shams report last week that Philly's cooled off on him. I find that hard to believe. What what do you think about that? They need him. They need a guy like that. They have the cap space for him. I think Philly is trying very hard to make it seem like they have the situation under control. Uh, You know, this is not Philly film school, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on them. But, like, (laughs) they... There's no more desperate team in the league this summer. They have exactly. they have to do something with that money, and that's part of the reason why I am going to continue. Like a, a lot of people are like, "Yeah, don't worry about OJ and Obi. He's going to come back. Leon's not going to let him get away." I I buy all of that, and I think ultimately OG is going to sign on the dotted line. Our our uh, mutual friend Ian Begley, when Ian comes on uh, at, with you know with me last week, and he says until. I see OG fire CA as his agency. I'm not going to be worried. I'm going to take that to the bank. All that being said, if you're Philly and you're like, okay, well, George, Paul George, we don't think he wants to come here, so he's not an option for us. And then you start looking at it and it's like, all right, well, you know, Jimmy Butler, we can't get him for what we have to offer. Like, Pat Riley's not going to do that, and, and, and he's not going to let Jimmy force his way here, and, like, we're not getting LeBron, and – Brandon Ingram doesn't really do anything for us. Like pretty soon you get close to, okay, well, why don't we just screw over the Knicks offer OG the max and Mm. worst comes to worst, you leave them in a tougher salary cap situation because they either let him walk for nothing or we got him. So that's why I'm kind of, I do, I am worried about Philly. Um, I, I don't know if you're Paul George, do you want to go play in that environment? I'm not sure I do. Yeah, ask ask Tobias Harris, right? So, and then once once MB goes down because you know he's going to go down at some point with you know some sprained knee, ligament, some type of thing. You know, not wishing it on him, but it's his history. Then hey, 
now it's a lot more on you to to deliver in Philly. Yeah, I don't, you know, the thing, like, yes, there's a lot of attention in L.A., but, like, he gets to play for the Clippers. Not yet, not with the Clippers, Clippers, man. Yeah, it's not the Lakers, you know? Yeah. Um, And I feel like, I I don't know, maybe George doesn't care about that stuff. Maybe he does. And then, oh, and, and then on top of that, I'm sure you guys have talked about this, the comments he made on his podcast recently about if, implying very strongly that maybe Dal Morey is not a guy that right. he wants to get into business with because of the lack of ability to trust him. Now, money goes a long way, yeah. so I, yeah. you know, maybe that doesn't matter. But it's a very interesting situation, and and really, for as much as the George Domino is the first domino on the player side, the like Philly, what they do is going to dictate a lot of other stuff so you know it, it they bear watching for sure 